me about a day to find this i this um Google phone. It it was sitting in the little shelfing, alright, and it flew out. All I could find was this thing before. And in fact I oops, I turned it on, huh? <laughs> uh the uh I found it I found it like this. I, the battery also flew out, which it wasn't all far, it was down in the trash pile there. But this battery, I'm surprised it comes off pretty, it comes off so easy. You just kind of flip it in there and I turned it back on and it works. So, this thing can take some damage. Oops! Alright, well, I won't pull the battery out again. I was about to say there's a little SIM card I found interesting. I, I bought a separate SIM card for $10. 32 gigabytes and put it in here, but it's kind of a, it works kind of screwy. I think having the original SIM card would work better. Just expanding on that, but you know the programming is in there and all that I believe. But uh, yeah, it fell apart, but got it back together again. I, I was surprised the accident blew off the blew off the back like that. I must have got hit pretty hard. I found it interesting uh, when uh, the cops arrived at the accident scene, and they were about to tell they were about to get a hold of a toll company. I asked if I had a preference. I said yes, I do, and but I wasn't able to call. They said, "Well, we'll maybe we could look into it." And then he changed his mind. He's like, "Well, I'm not able to. We'll just we we, we should probably go with the um, the non-preference." I was like, "No, I have a preference." I'm gonna go over to Flying J. I'll and I'll I'll do some research on the internet there, and he's and that's when he said something interesting to me. He said, "Well, it, it between the accident and Flying J, he said the guy that I got in an accident with might might uh, be in the area and might try attacking me." Okay, he was he was like trying to scare me. And give me this warning too, because maybe it's happened in the past. Maybe he was trying to scare me into hurrying up and making a decision. But I retorted that I was actually scared in those first few minutes when I came in, interact when I interacted with the guy, I, the black guy that I got in an accident with. I thought maybe he could pull a gun on me or something, you know, just just to silence the witness. But uh, you know, in those those first few minutes, those were the scariest for me. Uh, but uh, when the guy decided to run, you know, I, I told the cop, you know, he decided to run at this point. I don't think he's going to be attacking me. So I retorted back to him. But that was an interesting, uh, um, like, uh, thing he brought up. Because, like, maybe this type of stuff happens has happened in the past. So here's another thought. I bet that cop was thrilled to deal with two cars both from uh, different states outside of Idaho. Alright, so Avery Johnson is a famous basketball coach. If I watched basketball, I would have known that.
I'm thinking I'm just gonna want to give give in and get one of those bicycle, those baby or kids uh, cart things that a bicycle would uh, pull along. Those are more widely available than um, more of a storage thing. I just I hate giving the impression that I'm carrying around a kid, but I really would like to get something now that my car is really broken down. Some guy at the community meal said that there's uh, some kind of band deal at the front of the Capitol and here it is. Spectacular. Oh, I gotta get around this stuff first. <clears throat> Tents and music. I can't believe I could face a potential accessory to the crime charge by giving a guy a pair of shoes so he could like get away better because he was barefoot. Man, I gotta pull in so much money in the next few weeks to be able to get my car running and build up my my pretty much non-savings because all the money I got is, is going into repairing my car. If even that could be repaired. And if it can't, then the money's gotta go till preparing to be um, homeless without a car, getting a tent and some storage crates. <clears throat> Check in and all that. Is it between uh, four and what six or something? Uh, for the normal check in, yeah. Have you already been assigned right. a bunk? So if I like, no. So if I came in at, like midnight, you just check in here and. Yeah, I mean check. <clears throat> go generally. Uh, if you're gonna check in outside of those hours, you just need to let or somebody go so they. Check in at five of those hours. No, if you're not checking in, one second. Boise Rescue Mission River of Life. This is Sean. Okay, so the River of Life closes between, what, like 8 and 4 during the daytime, kick everybody out. And then there's a, uh, a check-in between 4 and 5.30 for people who have beds assigned. You can get a bed assigned anytime at night. So if the cops roust you at 1 a.m., you can go to the River of Life and... Um, uh, like get a bed assigned to you and then check in within three days or case manager is assigned to you and then they'll try to f um, find out things to get you transitioned so uh, they got kind of a, a unique system there there's rules to follow which are on the website I did not did not see them I'll have to take another look also, oh, there are four case managers there. Must be a pretty big place to have four. 